He then went to school. Suddenly, Hori's iPhone was ringing in the middle of history class. Hori went to the bathroom to answer his message. Matt, Sir Jorge, Tiffany Stevens has tied up the mayor of Seattle. Go out there and save him! Oh, if you're wondering why I'm talking to you, well, your nanny told me everything. But we are husband and wife, you know. Okay, Matthew, but what do I do? Well, Tiffany is refusing to accept anyone who looks like a tough hero. You'll have to disguise as a girl. Okay, but how? I packed in your bag a dark brown bob wig and a pretty, pretty purple dress with boots for you to wear. You know my motto, always be prepared. Hardy changed it to the dress, boots, and wig. He could face, fake a good female voice, but he sounded like Stevie Nicks. He then took a walk to Tiffany's house and rang her doorbell. And who could that be? A new female minion, she said to herself. She was hanging out in her room wearing a tiara, leotard, gold bracelets, heels, necklace, and stockings, practicing being queen of the world. Hello, my name's Anna Santana, she said. She said to Tiffany. Sounds like Hannah Montana. Anyways, you want to be another minion, huh? Well, you'll have to meet my other minions, Navi Ali and Muhammad Khan. They're Ahmed's cousins. Her cousin Ahmed is my boyfriend, and he's so lucky to have me as a girlfriend. By the way, you sound like a kid I know from school. Jorge? No, who is he anyway? Some kid at school I hate. He thinks he's better than me because he has money. Oh, and his glasses look dorky. I hate him. Suddenly, Jorge's phone went off. He answered it. Hello, Dimitri, he said after clearing his throat and changing his breastly, low voice and said Ted to his regular husky one. Dimitri, I told you, I can't come to your house tonight because tonight I have, well, he was cut off when Tiffany threw her purse at him. I knew it! Anna Santana doesn't exist. It's just a young Mr. Harry Garcia in disguise as a woman. So I am! And I found out you kidnapped John Parker, mayor of Bricksfield. And I know magic, he said. She just stared at him. Uh-oh. Well, not, not very much. She breathed a sigh of, of relief. But I can transform you into something hideous and hopeless, you lovely lady. Hori said lovely very sarcastically. He flipped through his magic book and spoke to himself quietly while pointing his wand at her. Bonita Fea! Bonita Fea! B Bella Fea! Hori spelled toward Tiffany's clothes, disheveled her hair, and scarred her body. My face! My beautiful face! Don't worry, it'll wear off in a day or two, said Jorge. Tiffany smiled. I think. Tiffany screamed. Hori set John Parker free and dashed back to school. Just in time for lunch! That weekend, everyone just decided to unwind after three very eventful first days of school. Jorge was singing a song in his room. The song was called Knocking on Heaven's Door. My mother would always play this song for me when I was little, he tearfully told his butler. I see, he said. Meanwhile, Joey was playing pretend in his living room. It's a post-apocalyptic world. The streets are packed with criminals, hobos, and thugs, left and right. A bomb will destroy it all. The only person who can save us now is Joey, Richard, McAdoo, said Joey. Suddenly, all the other kids... Suddenly, all the other kids from Bricksfield saw him through the big window in his living room. They all laughed. I see London, said Tony. I see Fred, said Ahmed. I see Joey's underpants. Ha, 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 said Vicky. I failed to see what is so humorous about all this, said Jorge. Are you, wear are you really wearing your mom's pink shirt? asked Tony. No, it's my dad's, said Joey. Everyone just stared at him. What? My dad's a mechanic, he said. Besides. The reason I'm wearing a pink shirt and no pants is because I'm so awesome, I can walk around to the pink shirt without pants any day of the week. That's why my dad owns this shirt. You're not wearing pants? Gross, said Angela. I take this for America's Funniest Home Videos, said Sam. I thought the show, I thought that show was canceled, said Joey. Not ah, said Sam, who took, a pic who took a picture of him. Okay, this is, em this is as embarrassing as it gets, said Joey. Suddenly, a plane appeared overhead. Be repeat, I see London, said the one of the men on the plane. I see France, said the, said the other one. I see some guy's underpants, said the first man said. Oh, said Joey. He then went to, he went to his room. Ahmed was playing an acoustic version of the song Burning Love on his guitar in his room after the incident. 
You are familiar with the work of Elvis Presley? Ahmed asked Tony when Tony went to Ahmed's house. Yep, said Tony. Awesome, said Ahmed. Let's rock and roll. Tony and Ahmed sang Burn in Love together. And that is, my friends, is the third chapter of The Secret Life of the Backyard Kids.